हरे कृष्णा राधिका कस्तूरी माता जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी प्रणाम ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्री ऑल ग्लोरी माता जी वेलकम वेलकम टू दिस प्रोग्राम कैन वी स्टार्ट विद मंगला चरण माता जी और यू वुड लाइक टू टेक ओवर व्हाट एवर यू कैन यू कैन डू द यूशुअल थिंग प्रभु जी आई कैन वेट ओके okay anyone wants to do the mangala charan hare krishna okay uh, let me do it ho magnana timirandasya gnana jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobishtam sthapitam yena bhutale vayam rupakadamayam dadati swapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri uta patakamalam shri guru on vaishnavamsha श्रीरूपम साग्रजातम सह गणा रघुनाथावीव साधत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण रघुलिता श्री विशाखांश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतकदाधारा श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे <coughs> हरे कृष्ण माता जी यस प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण यस वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द श्रीमद भागवतम सेकंड कैंटो थर्ड चैप्टर टुडे वर्स इज ट्वेंटी फाइव माता जी द लास्ट वर्स चैप्टर थैंक यू यस हरे कृष्णा डियर डिटीज स्टार्टेड नमस्ते सरस्वती देव कौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषे शून्यवादी पश्चाते शतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत कथाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय उदीरियेमता स्वागता कृष्ण पुण्यश्रवण कीर्तन हृदय तस्तोगी अभद्राणी विदूनोति सुहृत्सत नष्ट प्रायु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोक भक्ति भवती नैष्टी Hare Krishna, one minute. All right, dear devotees. Uh, so today, I was thinking we will do a little bit of uh, uh, revision from the third chapter to whatever verses we can cover, and then uh, maybe try to answer uh, one of the questions that came up in the last class. So uh, that's that's kind of the plan that I have. 
Uh, with this, uh, we will get started here. Yes, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Somebody had a question? Okay. Mataji, I think it's got um, unmuted, so I'll, I'll I'll mute that person, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. All right. Sorry, Mataji. Yes. No worries, Prabhuji. So, with regards to the third chapter, let's kind of do a revision, dear devotees, as we have come to the end of the third chapter. I don't want to procrastinate this. Um, mm -hmm. As you all know, uh, we finished, uh, we've been discussing from the third chapter of the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, titled Pure Devotional Service, Change of Heart or Worship of the Devatas. So, in response to Parikshit Maharaj's question about what is the highest goal of life, and what is the means to attain that goal? Our Sukadev Goswami is clearly presenting the topmost goal of life is Bhagavad Prema. And the means to attain that goal is Sadhana Bhakti. And then he also presents another popular opinion that the highest goal of life as considered by some people is Sai Jamukti. And the means to attain that Sai Jamukti is Ashtanga Yoga. So therefore, he also describes about two types of Ashtanga Yoga. One through which one attains what is uh, through the Krama Mukti, one, at, one attains gradual liberation. And then the other, we uh, see there is instant liberation or Sadhya Mukti, Sadhya Mukti. So he describes these two paths and eventually establishes that the path of Sadhana Bhakti to attain Krishna Prema is the topmost and is confirmed by the Supreme Lord himself. So, and then after establishing the fact, he starts this discussion about what about some people who may worship demigods? He says, yes, they are the least of the intelligent people, which means among those who perform some kind of worship, this faith that they have on the demigods is of the lowest order. But not wanting to alienate such people, the Shastras are also kind of seemingly encouraging them by telling that, oh, you want this? You worship this demigod. You want this? You worship this demigod. But actually in rea reality, what we have to abide by is akama sarva kama va moksha kama utarit. Actually the intelligent person, if he's intelligent, even if he has material desires, he will fulfill those material desires by worshipping our Supreme Lord Krishna. True? Anya Bila Shita Shunyam Jnana Karmadi, that even the material desires, you know, eventually after some time that will get taken care of. And then he will ask, why for pure devotion? If he takes up this path of Krishna Bhakti. So then he says, then what is the hope for these demigod worshippers? At what stage of demigod worship will it naturally become Shuddha Bhakti? The answer that is brought about in Srimad Bhagavatam is. Oh my God, that can't happen. Like there is no, directly it will happen like that. No, it's not possible. Only by the association of Vaishnavas can a demigod worshipper become a dev devotee. The bhakti in that part of that devotee is what is responsible for culminating bhakti upon that demigod worshipper. This is what we saw, dear devotees, elaborately we saw from Madhurya Kadambini of Sri Vilakshna Chakravati Thakura. Right? If there is no association of Vaishnavas, then can a demigod worshipper become a devotee? Sorry, it's not possible. No, association of devotee is the one which is responsible for that. Okay, so uh, then, uh, then he says, okay, but how can one give up worshipping the demigods? I have been worshipping the demigods for such a long time. No, suddenly you are saying I have to give up. Isn't this ingratitude to the demigods? Isn't this uh, wrong? No, no, it's not wrong. You know what? You look at Jnana Yogis. You look at Ashtanga Yogis. They are what they are practicing. Uh, and what they get from such practices is much higher than what one gets from demigod worship. Even such practitioners, if you look at them, when they come to the stage of understanding the superiority of bhakti without any qualms, 
they give up this inferior process and embrace the superior process of bhakti. So there is no such thing of you feeling ungrateful or ingratitude towards the demigod. Please understand this point. So therefore, uh, why should a demigod worshipper feel bad? Isn't it? Of course, he has decided to worship the master of demigods. Demigods will also be pleased by that. So there is no question of ingra ingratitude. It's, it's not that you develop a condescending attitude towards the demigods. You are very grateful to them. You have a lot of respect for them. And now you know the exalted Vaishnavas, they also have the respectful mood towards the demigods. Right? And when they are respected as Vaishnavas, they, they are also, see, demigods are respected for as Vaishnavas, meaning Shiva. Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu, right? He, in, if you're worshipping him like that, even Shiva will feel happy about it or and demigods will feel, oh, I'm being called as a Vaishnava here. There is no question of being ungrateful or ingratitude. So therefore, demigod worshippers should never feel like that, that you are being unchaste, right? The worshipping, mm, uh, you know, I have been worshipping demigods for such a long time. Now I understand Krishna is the Supreme Lord. How I can become ungrateful? It's not like that. So the Goswami seemed to have categorically con uh, concluded the presentation by giving Sukadev, Gos Sukadev Goswami's answer to Parikshit Maharaj about the topmost process and the means to attain the topmost goal. So at this point, Shaunakadi Rishis, who have great eagerness to uh, hear Harikatha, they very well knew this, there is this Harikatha that is going on between Parikshit Maharaj and our Sukadev Goswami. That continued for seven days. And therefore, they are intrigued. Oh, Sutta, are you planning to stop this Harikatha? You know, they are getting intrigued because now he's just concluding, yes, the ultimate thing is Krishna Bhakti and uh, Krishna Prema Bhakti and the, the, the means to attain that is Sadhana Bhakti. Now, demigods also is done. Demigod portions is done. So these Saunaka Dirishis, they are getting anxious. They are not able to sit on their seats. You know, they are like questioning, Sutta, what is this? We know that there is this uh, conversation that has happened between Parikshit Maharaj and our uh, dear Sukadev Goswami. That happened for seven days. They spoke Harikatha. Isn't it? We certainly know that the conversation happened for seven full days. But now you seem to have completed the presentation. It looks like you have uh, kind of summarized the presentation of them. We don't want any summaries. We want the whole presentation. We have uh, all the time at our disposal. So with this mood, uh, they, after hearing this very comprehensive, convincing presentation of our Sukadev Goswami, what further questions did Parikshit Maharaj ask Sukadev Goswami? They are asking Sutta. So they are not giving him a choice. Did they speak anything further? No. They did not give him a choice. Sutta may say no. Or he may say, oh, not much. You know, I have presented the essence. But very clearly he says, what other questions? They are very confident. Definitely our Parikshit Maharaj would have asked a lot of questions and we really want to know what those questions are. So without, you know, getting into uh, the discussion with our Sutta Goswami about, uh, you know, uh, what they want, they came directly to the point. What other questions? Meaning, they are confident that other questions are being asked by Parikshit Maharaj. So they want to know what further questions are being asked by our Parikshit Maharaj. So in the assembly of learned people, definitely discussions would eventually lead to Harikatha, isn't it? Harikatha would have taken place because there were so many uh, learned devotees who are sitting there. Definitely a lot of discussion would have happened and eventually a Harikatha would have happened. So they are very curious to know about that. You please narrate what further discussions took place because we know such discussions would have culminated to the uh, discussion of Harikatha. Therefore, we want to hear. This Parikshit Maharaj, he's such an exalted personality. Right uh, when he was born, he was a great devotee. It is evident from his early age. When he was a small boy, you know, where boys tend to play, 
Parikshit Maharaj was proactively engaged in the pastimes of Krishna. So even at that time, his exalted position was very, very clear. Sukadeva Goswami is no less. Sukadeva Goswami, you know, he's an omniscient personality. He's Vasudeva Parayana. He's completely surrendered soul to Vasudeva. And therefore, in meeting uh, of such exalted Vaishnavas, we have in one, uh, you know, Aparikshit Maharaj. Another one is Sukadeva Goswami. He are so exalted Vaishnavas. And definitely discussion of Harikata, discussion of wonderful qualities of Hari, name, form, qualities, pastimes of the Supreme Lord, definitely would have happened. There is no doubt about it. So we are eager to hear the subject matter. Can you please speak, dear Sutta? If you do not speak this, then our lifespan will be stolen by the rising and the setting of the sun. You know, every rising and setting of the sun steals away our lives. Except for the person who is engaged in Krishna Bhakti. So, a life is stolen for a person who is not engaged in Krishna Bhakti, dear devotees. Does it mean that persons who accept Krishna Bhakti will not die? No, 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 it is not like that. Right? It's not what they mean. So, just like uh, there is an example that is brought about by charity. The Smriti Puran talks about charity. In giving to the non-Brahmana, the amount remains the same. In giving to a Brahmana, if you give charity to the Brahmana, what would happen? The amount doubles in your next life. In giving a Brahmana who knows Vedas thoroughly, the amount multiplies by hundreds and thousands. This is what Manusmriti 7.85 says. But if one is thoroughly studied in Vedas, if, uh, then you get million times back. Therefore, so this example is being quoted to kind of bring out this analogy to say, similarly, if a person is utilizing his time in Krishna Bhakti, especially Krishna Katha, hearing Shravanam, Kirtanam, uh, doing Kirtan, then such a person, he enters or escapes the realm of karma and enters the direct jurisdiction of Krishna. Even though such a person may take birth, his subsequent birth is not going to be controlled by karma. His subsequent birth is going to be controlled uh, by what, what, what Krishna wants from him directly. right? Even though it will look like, let's say, the prisoners are taken from the prison house to an a train. So the train is moving towards the prison house. But you see some other people who are sitting on the train, they are also moving. But they are sitting in a different train. So similarly, even though devotees may seem as if they are growing old, they are getting disease, they are dying, all that, but none of them is orchestrated by the law of karma. It is actually taken care of by Krishna. The moment he takes up to Krishna Bhakti, the moment he takes up to Guru, Guru Padashraya, at that time, this person is directly under the jurisdiction of Krishna. So you may ask, uh, <clears throat> What about karma? So Krishna may, he is directly, uh, he is directly under the jurisdiction of Krishna means Krishna may give, take the part of karma, give a portion of karma to you, to, you know, mold you, do something with you. We never know the plans of Krishna, okay? We have to be very, very clear about the fact what Krishna has in plan for us. We may know from a very, very high level, oh, this is for my purification, this is for uh, getting my um, anarthas out, this is for making me um, uh, depend on Krishna. These can be some of the logical conclusions we come up with. That doesn't mean it's complete, right? Nobody, that is what Bhishma Dev's pastime tells us. Nobody knows what See, Vishra was bewildered. What is going on? And when he came to Bhishma, Bhishma, you know, put a strategic plan for him and said, well, you know, he, that is a beautiful discussion, dear devotees. I don't want to go there. But the point is, nobody can understand the inner motive of Krishna, why he does what he does. That is always going to bewilder us. But at a very high level, we can say, this is what it is. This is what that is so on and so forth. 
the dependence on Krishna should always be there. Yes, everything happens by the will of Krishna and everything happens for my own good. And I just need to, as a devotee, as a sadhaka devotee, what we are supposed to do is just learn from it. Right? Learn from the events that take place in a life. Uh, pass and fail doesn't work for a devotee. What works for a devotee is his dependence on Krishna. It's not about, yes, I have passed this test. No. Or I have failed this test. How much are you dependent on Krishna each time when the test happens? This is what a devotee should all... If, if, he, if he doesn't depend on Krishna, then he ultimately failed in the test. If he depends on Krishna every single time, that is pass. This is how he, a devotee can gauge himself, whether he passed or failed the test. It's not by success and failure that the material world tells. Yes, you make $1 million, you are a success. And if you make anything less than that, you are a failure. No. We, do, we define success in terms of our dependence to Krishna. How much are we depending upon Krishna each and every time whenever an event happens in our life? It could be a very sad event. It could be a very happy event. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, when it's a happy event, we understand how merciful is Krishna. Why, even though I'm not qualified, why does he do this to me? Right? And whenever a failure happens in our life where, you know, some, some sort of suffering comes to us, I could have got more suffering, but Krishna made it less for me. And through this, I'm able to understand his mercy and his hands still because there is so much purification needed for me. I need to understand that I need to fix this, this, this quality of mind at every circumstance. I should not identify with my body. I should not identify with my mind. These are the lessons we can learn from every event that happens in our life. So dear devotees, if we have such mentality, anything that happens in our life, you know, it's not going to trouble us anymore. But this needs a lot of practice. It needs a lot of hearing of Krishna Katha. Then only we will be able to develop such a state of mind. Till then, our mind is going to be fixed upon sense objects or material things or it will identify ourselves with the qualities of the mind. So we have to be very careful, dear devotees, as to what we are up to. Now, um, coming back to this point, Oh Sutta, please help us. So like that, they inspire Sutta Goswami to continue to say something, Krishna Katha. So let us see what they have to say. This is what the Shainal Shaunakadi Rishis are continuing. Because someone may say that the person whose life is not stolen away does not receive rebirth in this world. So the person whose life is not stolen away does not receive rebirth in this world. Someone may say, eh, uh, why are you go glorifying Krishna and Krishna Katha? Isn't successful life means long life? Somebody may say, na. Oh, isn't successful life means having a good health with nice prana shakti while we are living and having a lots of enjoyment like eating more food, enjoying nicely. Isn't that the goal of life? Somebody may ask you. And most people, you know, this is how they define the success of life. Why do you say that hearing Krishna Katha, sitting and hearing Krishna Katha is the highest goal of life? And such a person um, is a great person. What is so great about it? So he says, if you are living a long life in success, then you know what? Look at the trees. The trees are much more successful than you. What is the value for having such a long life? If you say not just long life, but long life full of vitality, lot of prana shakti. Oh, he says, actually the success of life then uh, bellows of blacksmith, they breathe much more powerfully than you. So then the bellows of blacksmiths must be actually more successful of in life according to your definition. Right? Full of vitality, full of opportunity, uh, full of pran shakti. So, uh, he also brings up another point. Oh, you know what? Not just vitality. Opportunity for my enjoyment also should be there. Eating nice food, enjoying nicely. That should be, that. that's great, isn't it? Of course, you talked about long life and for that you contrasted it with the trees to say, oh, trees must be much so successful than you if you say long life is the goal of life. 
then you said oh, okay long life uh, with vitality and prana shakti that is uh, very powerful and that is the real success of life if you say that then bellows of blacksmith they are much more successful in life than you are now you are just bringing up the point oh you know not only that we should have be able to enjoy there should be an opportunity for enjoyment uh there should be a scope for enjoyment like eating nice food uh enjoying nicely don't the village animals animals like uh you, you know they the they have the capability to mate uh, they have the capacity to eat they have you know if you look at animals and birds they have much more capacity to eat and mate what is so great about it you you know uh, so this is this is how he uh, brings about the contrast don't the animals eat and mate they can eat much more than the humans so therefore the quality of life matters that's how he's contrasting it to say the quantity of life uh, the quality of life what matters more than the quantity of life ultimately none of these animals trees they know how to escape out of the samsara do they know no therefore ultimately our each action should be towards our eternal life so therefore one should endeavor in such a way that he is not roaming in these 14 planetary systems that's no use be under and then be under the tight grips of karma no one should endeavor in such a way that he escapes the samsara enters and plunges into devotional service which is characterized by shravanam kirtanam smaranam therefore don't deprive us of this opportunity uh, to go closer closer to the eternal life so someone may say you are glorifying shramanam kirtanam and you are condemning the life of nice enjoyment sophisticated life why are you critical of uh, this kind of comforts good enjoyment and long life why are you being so critical the whole world glorifies such people those people who are able to make more money those people who are able to la- live life king size the sports person the cinema actors they are all glorified by the world except for you what are you saying if all the people in the whole world they are all glorifying these people so for that he gives an answer in verse number 19 to say whose ears whose name who, whose ear has not heard about krishna who praises such persons if you ask that question only people who are themselves like dogs hogs camels and donkeys they glorify this animalistic person do you want to become one of those kinds of special animals not ordinary these are all special animals because they have managed to get into the entrance in the you know pages of bhagavatam that's why they are special dogs so shila prabhupada talks about why dogs why hogs why camels why donkeys like that he says see dogs because they have dogs because they have absolutely no discrimination about what they should eat they completely lack discrimination they eat the most abominable things when it comes to you know i mean and then they eat the most abominable things too we know that and when it comes to mating or, or having op- uh, sex this female hog you, you, you know she eat good they don't care if this female hog is a daughter mother sister nothing like that there is no discrimination and people in today's world they are also becoming like that like hogs this is what shila prabhupada says dear devotees and then what about camel camel takes pleasure in eating thorns you know the blood starts oozing out of its tongue and it starts tasting its own blood but it it is feeling as if it's an incredible juice is there in this thorny bush and it's eagerly eating it the thorn just keeps tearing away his tongue and he keeps getting blood more and more and he enjoys his own blood thinking he's enjoying something from this thorny bush which is very very tasty in reality he is suffering considering you know they are in reality he is suffering but he's thinking he is enjoying so similarly people by engaging in conjugal union they are losing the semen which is the condensed form of blood and in losing the blood they are actually thinking they are enjoying and in in reality they are losing their vitality similarly 
Prabhupada talks about donkeys. Donkeys, they are henpecked. Even though a female donkey kicks the male donkey, nevertheless, the female donkey keeps going back to the male donkey, keeps back going back to that donkey who, whoever you know hit him or whatever it is. It is henpecked. So uh, the master may want to protect his house, which is millions of dollars worth, by throwing some bones or leftovers to the dog, and the dog faithfully serves the master who is exploiting the dog. So similarly, people of this world are serving unfit masters and are wasting their life, uh, wasting their life instead of turning towards the Lord. This is what is happening according to Srila Prabhupada. He just brings up this very, very practical insights. He says this animals, their animalistic life is to be condemned. They are glorified profusely mm, by dogs, pigs, camels, and donkeys. Only animalistic people can glorify such people. He as a person uh, accepts the qualities of these four animals, whereas we are all incapable of taking up any other animal qualities. Um, meaning, uh, see, uh, animals, they have a specific quality. The animals cannot take up a quality of another animal. But we take up all these animalistic qualities. Srila Prabhupada brings about this beautiful point to say, see this human being, he can become a hog, he can become a pig, he, uh, he can, uh, you know, become a dog. But when you look at the animals, the animals don't become another animal. Dog doesn't eat a stool like a hog, right? Uh, or the pig doesn't serve his master like a dog. This doesn't happen. So every animal has specific qualities, but a human can get all these qualities. So overstepping the scripture ordained by Dharma, he accepts the qualities with passion. The human being accepts the qualities of the animals with passion. Our, our quality should be uh, uh, to become aware of Lord Krishna. This should be the quality that we develop. We should develop. But instead, this human being, um, you know, is getting diverted. He's diverted. Uh, he doesn't know what is right and what is wrong. As donkeys, we don't know what destination befalls. And we go behind the sheep donkey. But the human, you know, the human donkey doesn't know, uh, you know, what is right and what is wrong. But this human being, he also behaves in that way. As if he doesn't know anything. Uh, in this way, he Prabhupada brings about the contrast to talk about the animalistic qualities of men, uh, and he becomes uh, and uh, this is this is the explanation he gives where the animals they have specific qualities and they they just stick to the qualities because they don't have any kind of intelligence. But the human intelligent person. Um, you know, he he has the intelligence, but he's not able to use his intelligence in uh, fruitful activities like turning towards Lord. This is the point. Uh, so that's that's what is bring, brought about here in the Sri Lavishna Chakravati Takura's purport also. The quality of camel is carrying heavy burdens. The quality of donkey is to, being, uh, is to get kicked by his mate. Krishna has not gone in that person's years. So this type of people uh, who are doing such kind of uh, having this animalistic qualities, Krishna doesn't have gone in such people's years. He who appears uh, in the front of sickness, Gada as its enemy, thus he will appear and destroy the sickness of anger and other bad qualities of this animalistic man. So here, Krishna Chakravati path, he talks about Gada Graja, meaning he who appears in front of sickness as its enemy. He, if he comes uh, in contact with such people, he will appear and destroy the sickness of anger and other bad qualities of this animalistic men uh, who lack discrimination, who are very lusty and uh, things of that nature. So when the Supreme Lord enters into the ear holes and the heart of such a person, then oh, he removes everything, greed, anger, lust, pride. But such a person, this person, he's uninterested to hear Krishna Katha. Because his life is getting wasted in such kind of animalistic qualities. So basically, 
he's speaking very heavily in order to indicate that how much is the glory of krishna katha and how how much we are aware of uh, the fact that our life is getting wasted in an inglorious way if you are not interested in hearing krishna katha there is a contrast last week we saw about uh, very in detail very very much in depth about shri lakshmi chakravarti takura's uh, point on how moods uh, actually play a role in determining uh, in determining about uh, the moods play a very important role in determining uh, what is in store for us right i mean whether we would accept or not depends upon the moods we are in so now they are going to describe a limb by limb description of such a person uh, uh, of this person you know who is not willing to hear krishna katha who is refusing to hear krishna katha this is what is the next few verses that are going to be described his uh, sutha how lamentable the years of the person who has not heard the glories of the lord are like snake holes the tongue which does not chant the glories of the lord is as offensive as frog's tongue this is how uh, they are telling oh my god this uh, this is not at all good it's very very offensive it's nothing but uh, nothing auspicious that comes about with the croaking of a frog that's what he says the years of such a person is compared to the snake holes from which nothing auspicious can be expected and the tongue of such a person who is interested in taking all kinds of nonsense like frog tongue which when vibrated uh, invites only the serpent of time and death so here shri lakshmi chakravarti takur after the whole person uh, after this whole person has been criticized the parts of the body are criticized in these next five verses this person as such who doesn't who refused to hear uh, krishna katha has been condemned and now limb by limb description of such a person is being described in these uh, five verses to help us understand what's the use of this person the tongue which doesn't chant the glories of the lord is offensive like that of a frog or it is offensive like uh, how uh, an unchaste woman which who's destroying all the piety it is compared to that see the uh, the importance of hearing krishna katha uh, one if one performs bhakti then that is glorious but if the limbs are not engaged in the service of krishna then they are definitely fit to be criticized the the topmost part of the body is head even though it is it may be decorated with the most uh, uh, fabulous crown turban it looks so wonderful but if that head is refusing to bow down to lord mukunda then it's just a heavy weight this person is going to sink in the samsara a person may have this expensive crown but if by mistake he falls into the ocean uh, with a golden crown then that heavy golden crown will sink him very fast similarly a person in this world he may have this expensive crown or whatever this world has to offer but he if he is not going down to lord mukunda then he is going to drown in this ocean of samsara what about the hands the hands are not interested in serving the supreme lord then the hands may be wearing this dazzling uh, bangs and bracelets it's just the it's just considered as if uh, it's the hands of the dead person a dead person hand cannot function dead person's hand is of no use similarly the real function of the hand is uh, to worship the supreme lord but if it is not engaged in worshiping the supreme lord then it is just a dead body with the dead hands with the dead body uh, like this he is giving a limb by limb description the hand is offering um, but if you see he he's just uh, getting another example what is the meaning of dead hands whatever the hand is offering it's not accepted even though you may offer pinda um, and everything to the devatas all that is accepted only if you serve the supreme lord it's not accepted by the pitras if you are not serving the supreme lord right because that bhav has to be there achut bhav has to be there that the demigods are serving krishna and so with that feeling if you are offering the the prashadam to the demigods of the food that krishna has eaten then that is when the demigods will also be interested in your bhoga whatever is offered to the demigods by the demigod worshipers is not accepted by the demigods if you do not serve krishna 
or if you do not have the heart in glorifying Krishna, the tongue is not glorifying Krishna, the hands are not offering worship to the Krishna, then how will the demigods accept? If someone offers demigod prasadam, we may not say it on their face, but internally we should understand that actually it's not demigods prasadam, right? Demigods are Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas Uchishta. And the Vaishnavas Uchishta, the, the, the demigods are going to accept it when it is offered to the Supreme Lord. Meaning that bow must be there for that worshipper. So this is the point, dear devotees. Uh, mm, uh, even though the hands may be moving around, even though the hand, I mean, wearing bracelet, golden brackets, but if the hand is not engaged in the offering of Krishna, then uh, it's not pleasing. It's not at all pleasing. That is reality. This is what Bhagavatam is communicating. Um, uh, that we should, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, make use of each and every limb of Krishna in the service of the Lord. Then it uh, talks about men's eyes, which are not, uh, which which do not see the form of the Lord, are like eyes on the peacock feather, and they fall on the thorny field of samsara. Men's feet, which do not walk on the places of the Lord, are like bases of the trees to be cut by the axes of the Yamatutas. So there is a contrast here, right? The eyes, which do not see the deity of Vishnu, are like those on the peacock feather. Those persons. Mm, the peacock feather may look beautiful, uh, but uh, the eyes has to look, look. I mean, if it doesn't look at the deity of Vishnu, then, you know, even though it uh, looks beautiful from interior, if it looks at unwanted things, then that uh, there is no, there is no uh, role of the eyes also. Even though it sees, it doesn't see anything. That's the point. Uh, like that, uh, the feet of the men who do not go to the holy places, uh, they are similarly to the base of the trees cut by the axis of the Yamatutas. Everything is a base. It's a shrama. It's just uh, there. It's not serving the purpose. Like that, Bhagavatam wants us to be engaged in pure devotional service. This is why it, it says over and over and over that I need to be in the service of the Lord. I need to be doing the service of the Lord. My each and every limb has to be engaged in the service of the Lord. If it is not serving the purpose of engaging in the service of the Lord, then it's a waste. The person who does not uh, smear his body with the dust of devotees' feet is, uh, devotees feet is a ghost. Ghosts are not accepted by the Lord. That person who doesn't smell the fragrance of Tulasi on Vishnu's feet is similarly a ghost. All criticism of various parts of the body are there. Uh, the person who does not touch the dust of devotees' body um, he is like a living corpse, it seems, uh, who, who frightens the devotees by his presence. If, because the Lord considered his devotees to be his art. And if such a devotee is not respected or taken care of, then he is considered to be a ghost only. I mean, this is what is... Uh, he is so attached to the... Uh, I mean, the Lord is so attached to his devotees. And if such a devotee is not respected by anybody, then obviously Lord is not going to be happy. That person, even though he's alive, he's just a ghost. That is what Srimad Bhagavatam describes. So how respectful we have to be to such kind of devotees. I mean, uh, as we know, there is gradation in devotees too. And uh, the more you advance in devotion, how much a devotee has to be respected, that definitely is being taught in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, and then it talks about Tulsi, right? The fragrance of Tulsi. Uh, how uh, a person who is not eager to smell the fragrance of Tulasi, it's also a breathing corpse. He may be breathing, no use. Um, you know, that's kind of the criticism that is being brought about by people who are not uh, attached to the Lord. Right? Uh, so this is what is the, uh, you know, the verses uh, till now that we have seen, which criticizes or condemns uh, the people who are animalistic and it also talks about limb by limb description of such people and what activities they perform. All of them are compared to that of either a living co I mean, corpse or dead body or a ghost or, you know, it's just considered useless, uh, whatever they do, if it is not associated with the service of the Lord. So, dear devotees, now um, I want to really quickly touch on and 
uh, move to this point if possible about shine uh, punni matya lokam vishanti right uh, it has a long uh, i want to do a good job of explaining a little bit more uh, by talking about the previous context and things like that mm, we have only 10 minutes and i am running out of time i have to go to some other place um mata ji do you want to do it today just just kind of give you an overview or do you want me to do it uh, you know in an elaborate way in the next class mata ji i'll leave it up to you to decide yes mata ji i would like to get an elaborate uh, understanding because again in chapter 2 uh, uh-huh. uh, in kanta 2 chapter 2 verse 2 again is coming that even from the satya loka Uh, people come down to this uh, material world so please uh, let's give it a little bit more time like 15 minutes if it's okay with you so then we can okay. discuss about it okay because, so next class you know, i'll sometimes, allow... sometimes we get a little answer here a little answer there we uh, we don't get a, a complete answer where where we can um, talk to when preaching people ask questions so we have to have a complete answer with reference so that yes we are, here we are we, we have the answer so I, i'll leave it up to you so please uh, i would like to get an elaborate answer thank you also okay, so you know that- uh, we have started this question and answers uh, session if you can come in there we'd be very grateful uh, you are in california right yes mata ji but it will be 12 o'clock your time uh, i've put that up mata ji It's oh. to, to, on Saturdays at at twelve um, noon our time because we are on the same okay. time zone. So okay. I sent you the the, the message. Just check it, Mataji. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, Mataji. So today I'm going out, Mataji. But uh, from mm-hmm. next week I can try to join. Hopefully, okay. uh, thank you. Thank today, you. Yeah. I would. Um, it will be much appreciated, Mataji. Thank sure, you so sure. much. Definitely, Mataji. We'll And do. then if you explain on that uh, platform, it will be better because people will come only with questions. Ah, uh-huh. sure, sure. That's perfect. Okay, okay Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Definitely. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Uh-huh. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Um. So, so, any other questions, dear devotees? Are we good? Mataji, what's to- the time there? Oh, my time here is ten o'clock. It's going to become ten a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So seven hours difference. Yeah. When we start, yeah. I think so, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. <laughs> Hare Krishna. so yeah um, we can end the session uh, if there are no other the question chance hari krishna hari krishna i couldn't rec- i couldn't recognize there is one number which is joined 66 is it is it from oh yeah mother oh, no, mataji oh no vaijanti mataji thank you yes. hari krishna hari krishna. Hare krishna. Hare krishna. Hare krishna prabhu we missed your personal association for a long time now mata ji <laughs> grandmother's duty mata ji <laughs> i know so i review your class after it is done okay mata ji thank Hare you Krishna. so much hari okay. krishna hari uh, let's all chant uh, uh, hari krishna mahamantra once in glorification of his her grace uh, radhika kasturi mata ji हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 वंचा कल्पतरुगेश्वरंतराज मद्भागवतम की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णवी की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जय A great Kasturi Mata Ji ki jai so much. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. Mataji, you All glory to the Son of God. All glory to God. You spoke so Shri nicely Lapa. about Lapa. each limbs of the Lord and how uh, if we don't serve the Lord, what is our position? Thank you so much, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Mata Ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा